Hi, and welcome back to Cybersecurity Elevated brought to you by C1 Risk. This is the speed version of the internal control training that we have a longer version of, if you'll prefer, uh, which only 10 minutes, and this one's only gonna be a couple, uh, which will teach you everything you need to know about an internal control, what it is, how to write it, um, and uh, what we're talking about when we refer to something called design effectiveness and assurance um in specifically in reference to audits all right so we're going to get started today we'll spare all of the pleasantries and we'll start with what is an internal control so we um leaned on our friends from ucsf from this our globally renowned little local university next door here in san francisco and they define an internal control as a process affected by an entity's board of directors management or other personnel designed to provide reasonable assurance that information is reliable that you're in compliance with applicable laws. And in the case of financial reporting, that financial reporting is correct. For us, of course, it's information security. So it could be a much broader scope. Um, anything that you're providing, uh, basically it says that any kind of um, uh, reporting that you provide through your internal control must be correct. Okay, so let's show you how to put one together. And we're going to go into our platform to do that. Okay, so by the magic of television, here we are in the C1 Risk uh, full suite GRC automation platform. If you'd like to learn more about the platform, if you like what you see today, of course, click c1risk.com in the links below and uh, we'll give you a free demo uh, anytime you're ready. So we're working with uh, ISO 18.2.2 today, which of course is compliance with security policies and standards. So you can see here in the ISO control, this is what ISO is asking us to do. So managers to regularly review the compliance of information uh, information processing and procedures within their area of responsibility. Woo, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, and note that here in the C1 Risk platform, you get this wonderful uh, opportunity to look at guidance um, for how to write the control and the type of evidence that you'll need. And all of this has been provided by our audit partners. So it's really gonna help you um, accelerate your readiness to audit. So you can look at this here. And um, so let's talk about design effectiveness uh, first for a second before we get into actually writing the internal control. So for design effectiveness, what the um, auditor is going to be looking for is how you've written the control to ensure that it's properly implemented. So there are a couple of different ways that you can attack that. But one of the things that you want to note here, of course, is in this guidance, we're looking for multiple things to actually ensure that this control requirement is being met. So one of the ways that you can do that is make sure that you cover all of these in the internal control. But what we encourage most organizations to do is to think about how many internal controls and maybe establishing multiple internal controls to make sure that each component is satisfied for this requirement. OK, so that's how we're going to approach this today. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go to our internal controls. Note that they're all mapped uh, automatically to your control library. and We'll just add our internal control. So as we go into internal control, um, we can put our name. And so we might want to uh, associate that to the control itself. This is so we can find it later on. We also have an opportunity to write a source reference here. So we could also put that here as well if we wanted to. And maybe this is our zero one control. OK. So going back to design effectiveness, we are going to write the control focusing on one specific aspect um uh, for this requirement and that was security awareness training so assuring that managers are in compliance or adhering to security policies um, one of the ways to do that is we're going to provide them with security awareness training so we're going to write a control about security awareness training so when we come to write a control there are th three things that we need to consider for design effectiveness that is who is implementing the control how is it being implemented which will lead into our control strength as well we'll mention that in a minute and how often. We help you out a little bit in the C1 Risk platform. You can set the cadence for how often we need to implement this control. We're gonna write this as an annual control here. Uh, we can also select the nature of the control. Now we, we will talk about this more in, um, uh, in a future training, but note that there are different types of control, detective, corrective, and preventative. So of course this one would be a preventative control. And uh, we can assign a control owner here um, for the person who is actually implementing the control. Now, when we write this as a description, though, we still want to incorporate all those elements. 
So the way that we're going to write this control is going to uh, actually reflect all of these um, specific aspects as well. So with that in mind, the control might look like something like this. And again, this is just an example. You need to write your own control yourself. Disclaimer. <laughs> So HR, or maybe it's the InfoSec team, provides all managers with mandatory security awareness training and requires attestation of completion on an annual basis. So again, there you've got the who, the how, and uh, the how often. So continuing with design effectiveness, that control strength then is also something you need to be thinking about. So you've got to write a control basically that you know you can implement and or are ideally implementing already. That said, uh, when you first write a control, it's possible that you haven't got to implementation yet and you're just uh, writing something that you know you have to. So we would note that as uh, either not implemented, so somewhere between 10 and 50 percent or partially implemented around 50 to 60 percent. And then once we get into that implementation, once the uh, the control is in a policy and once it's being validated on a regular basis, implemented and validated on a regular basis, then we might put it somewhere in the 80th or even 90th percentile. Note to self, anything above that, anything that where if you want to put a control is 100% implemented, that might cause the auditor to ask some questions because 100%, you know, we really try and steer away from 100% in risk management, compliance management, because there are risks, nothing is 100%, nothing is completely fallible. And so we try to keep it in the, you know, optimistic but realistic phase. And we might put 80% and that would still that would still dictate fully implemented. Now, this control strength is actually going to is actually going to impact your risk scores once you get into risk management later on. So that's why this percentage actually means something and will become important down the road. But we'll get into that at a later date. So once you've got all of this in place, that's your internal control written. This should be ready to go. And then just again, make sure that we validate it. Now, just to get to assurance, what we want to do then is uh, in the assurance space, we're really making sure that we have the evidence um, that we need to validate this control at the control strength that we've said that we can validate it at and that we can provide that based upon the cadence that we need to implement this control. So that requires your evidence to be built out in, your, in, the, in the C1 risk platform and your evidence um, library and for you to collect that evidence, in this case, on an annual basis, or again, based on the cadence you need to implement. Uh, internal control speed implementation version today. I hope you found this helpful. Follow us at c1risk.com. I'll come and see us or put your comments and questions in the comments below and we'll get back to you. Thanks again for joining us at Cybersecurity Elevated. Have a great day.